Hey everyone, I hope you are all well. Today's video is going to be about my experience as a flight attendant for Ryanair. And it's gonna kind of be a mini series so that I can cover the various stages that I went through in order to actually get to the job. And then the final video will probably be me talking about the job, the specifics of it. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of share. I kind of need to break it down in order to get this information across to help anybody who is considering becoming a flight attendant for Ryanair or who is just curious, you know, because there is some information out there, but it can always help getting more individual um, reviews or individual opinions and um, sh people sharing their individual experiences, especially because they do send you out to, you know, random countries in Europe, um, random bases. Sometimes your base actually contributes to the experience that you have. And I kind of feel that that was how it was for me. Where I went was part of the flight attendant experience. So, okay, let's start with the application. I started applying to become a cabin crew the summer of 2018. Um, I was just looking for jobs which could help me to travel and initially I wanted to do long haul or at least a mix of long haul and short haul with uh, British Airways. I did make it to the assessment day but I didn't go through all the way to the end so therefore I didn't get the job. British Airways are quite strict and quite brutal with the way they cut people off along the way during the day so they could have a selection of 30 people on the assessment day and they will definitely get rid of at least 60% of those people whereas with Ryanair it's like they try to recruit as many people as possible on those assessment days they aren't really being exactly picky but I'll dive into that as I talk about it okay I made the application towards the end of August I got a reply towards the end of September I was invited to an assessment day for the start of October I attended and by the start of November, I was already at a training course. And my training course was in Hahn, Germany. So as for applications, they post job postings on different job boards. So all you really have to do if you're searching for these opportunities is to go on Google and search Ryanair cabin crew job vacancy or Ryanair flight attendant job vacancy, something like that. And you will find it, whether it's on LinkedIn or Indeed or Read or any of the websites that they are using, you will find it. So it was started in August, application in August, August, September, October, November. So over the span of about three to four months, that is how long it took me to actually get into the job, at least get onto the training course. The assessment day that I went to was very close to Stansted Airport in a hotel. I think it was Holiday Inn and they give you all the details about that in the invitation email. We did have to pay one pound for a shuttle between the airport and the hotel. It's actually the hotel shuttle bus that comes and collects people. And it's definitely a really quiet area. I think they have a petrol station around there, maybe a McDonald's, maybe a little cafe. There's not really much around there. At that time I was living in Reykjavik. So when I got that email, I was like, hmm, do I take a chance on this, go to the assessment day and see if I can make it work, like become a flight attendant? Should I go and just see what it's all about? I think it all started with a bit of curiosity. I am glad that I took up the opportunity, but at the same time, I did miss Iceland very, 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 very much. I, I basically had to start again. It's not just like, you know, switching jobs while you're in the country. I literally had to pack up and go. Yeah, so I was living in Reykjavik at the time, so I did have to think about that, think about leaving my life. You do have to really want it, so I do think that's something that you have to consider, that when you do apply for this job, just make sure you know that you could end up at any base. They just kind of assign you to where they need people. So at the assessment day, there were all kinds of people there. It was very, very eclectic. There was a lot more of like European people who maybe had been living in England for quite a few years. There weren't that many people who flew in for the assessment day. It started off by us kind of gathering in the lobby, catching up with each other, maybe even checking out each other's outfits, like, you know, have you got the right tights or the right shoes or this and that. And I know that some people went out and bought specifically clothes for the that assessment day. I did actually, I did do that. I think I wore mocha tights and like a, you know, pencil skirt, a blouse, a black blouse, kind of simple, like up to the uh, elbows and heels of course, uh, a bun in my hair, low bun, and kind of just kept it really simple. It was different from the way that I dressed on the British Airways assessment day. I would say that Ryanair is definitely a bit more relaxed in how you dress 
when it comes to the assessment day. British Airways will definitely look at your exact shoes because you have to make sure it's cabin crew shoes. You should actually come dressed as a potential cabin crew. White shirt, blazer if you have, skirt down to your knees, knee length skirt, like a pencil skirt, very smart, mocha or black tights no higher than 15 or 20 denier. Your hair must be very neat. You definitely need to have a manicure, either red or a nude that suits you. Actually, no, a nude that's kind of more on the Caucasian side of things because a nude for a black person could be brown, but they definitely do not want you to be wearing brown nail polish. Polish. So it definitely has to be one of those pinky nudes. Pinky nude or a pink, bright pink, pale pink, whatever kind of pink you want is okay. I would definitely go more for the pale pink but it depends on how you put your outfit together so you can make that judgment that's fine a red lip is perfect a red lip is just it's perfect or you can go for a more of a nude lip definitely have to be wearing makeup make sure you have some mascara and some eyeliner on just so it's kind of visible that you you know your features kind of pop a bit so you do have to be made up you do have to be kind of dolled up and look the part don't skip on that when it comes to flight uh, like British Airways or any other more high-end airline I think with Ryanair they are a bit more flexible but I would say you definitely should at least make the effort to kind of ensure that there's no way that you would be rejected you know but i don't think they would reject you just because you're not wearing makeup they're more interested in the fact that you can speak english but i will dive into that a bit more so um yes gathering in the lobby then they invited us for the induction in a, in a room they did a presentation told us about the job told us about the pay told us about the fact that we could be sent anywhere we already knew that i think told us about like bonuses they told us about like how the company is growing the reputation of Ryanair some things we knew some things we didn't know but most of it was just kind of you know just covering general knowledge and the lady who did the presentation was an ex flight attendant now she's on the ground I think working in head office and she does mostly recruiting everybody who talked to us that day the interviewers the people doing the presentations they were all ex cabin crew ex flight attendants some men some women I think there were about five of them in total we did an English test we had to write a solution to a problem so it's almost like dealing with a customer but we actually had to explain our answer in written English to make sure that we could actually speak English at that point if you did know how to speak English you definitely would not be accepted after that point they let people go so it was around lunchtime for British Airways they're doing this as well sorry to always reference British Airways but it's I'm just kind of like comparing with British Airways they measure you the height if you're too short they'll definitely let you go and tell you to go straight away if you don't bring certain documents or if you don't have your passport if you don't have certain things that they actually tell you to bring for the assessment day they will definitely let you go. Height is a big thing in British Airways. If you cannot reach, they do the reach test. If you cannot reach a certain point in the simulation cabin um, shelf or cabin hat bin, they immediately let you go. If you do not pass a certain test, they let you go. Each stage, they have so many stages and they keep letting people go along the way. But with Ryanair, which was what I'm telling you about, you just have to do the English test, this writing test. And at that point, they let people go. So. What they say is, they told us what they've announced to us um, during the presentation, is they either give you an answer of yes, no, or improve your English. That day, they just told two people, I think it was about two, maybe two, maybe three people, who were just all standing there outside the presentation room, I think it was in the lobby. They called out three names and then they said, I'm sorry, but you've not been successful. They told those people that they need to improve their English. In Ryanair, like with my experience in the job, there are a lot of people who don't have perfect English but they can still you know communicate well that is quite important because English is the official language of aviation so there's no compromise on that of course I already said people were not as pristine as British Airways but people did still look cute people were still smart people were still you know put together and I could tell that a lot of people did really want the job some people just came to see if it was something they were interested in I was definitely one of those people who was just a bit curious it kind of ended up sparking my interest a bit more just because of curiosity not because of the money they they give you because the money isn't that great I'll tell you right now I'll probably be able to break that down I noticed also that day the interviewers were quite 
keen to bring the best out of people during the one-on-one -on -one interviews. So after we had that English test, we were sent outside and they were calling in people one by one. They put everybody's name on a list and gave you a specific time to come in for your interview. And when I had my one-on-one -on -one interview, I showed them my passport, I showed them my full-length photos because we were required to have photos of ourselves, like full-length photos wearing smart clothes, kind of show ourselves so that they would remember our faces. They were asking us like, you know, how would you describe yourself in three words? And then I gave three words and he was like trying to bring out more words out of me like oh what about this and what about that and I was like yeah yeah that too that too <laughs> so they were quite I would say friendly I think once you've actually been a cabin crew you've been through the process of being a cabin crew and then you end up going to head office and you genuinely have a good heart then you just have a good heart there's no you know there's nothing no no two ways about it but I think I did meet people on the job who were actually more on the mean side so um, with this job, I'll just tell you now that you can meet those lovely people and you can meet those not so lovely people that you just kind of just really just don't want to cross. I could tell that because they were kind of keen to kind of bring out those qualities in you that they really were just, their goal was just to recruit as much as possible because the turnover of um, the cabin crew is quite high. So that's something to bear in mind. Um, you will find a lot of people go through the training on the day of, of starting the job. On the first day of flying to the base, they might decide this is not for me, I'm leaving. Or maybe they quit really early and just like, this is not for me, it just doesn't work. But there are people who have been in the job for years and years, they absolutely love it. But they do really need to recruit a lot of people in order to really, really keep the staff rotating and to actually make sure they have enough cabin crew to fly, enough standby and all that. So it's quite important for them to make sure they try to bring out the best in people, especially at assessment day, because after that, it's like, it's your turn to prove yourself. Before assessment day, you are asked to bring different documents. I'm just gonna read it from the email. Please note the information and requirements below. Please bring the following documentation to the assessment day. European Union passport. I told them mine is about to expire, but I'm, I can renew it. It's okay, just you can still come to the assessment day, but just need to make sure that by the time it's time for you to go to the training course, you have a renewed passport that is actually more than 18 months valid. We need to bring your CV in English. You have English fluency. You need to bring a pen and paper, and that's pretty much it. They give you some useful information that tell you that there's no fee. In the past, Ryanair actually used to charge for their training course. I don't think they charge for the assessment day, but they do charge for the training course. They used to charge, I think it was about three grand, 3,000 euros, some, something around that to become a cabin crew. But then they started to make their training free. And then they give you running order. So basically what I've just explained, registration, you complete a written English test. Upon successful completion of the written English test, you're invited to presentation. After presentation, face to face interview like I said and then it says please ensure you're av you are available until at least 6 p.m. although it's likely to for you to finish earlier and yeah I finished a bit earlier but that's pretty much how the day went they tell you what to wear ladies you are required to wear knee length skirt with short sleeved shirt or blouse that's exactly what I did I don't know why they want short sleeve I think it's so that they can see if you have any tattoos or not with Ryanair now they have the long sleeve shirts you can have tattoos preferably not on your face just kind of on your body it's fine as long as they're not on show or visible they can give you a long sleeve shirt to wear a lot of airlines do not accept tattoos even if they aren't visible if they catch you with a tattoo then you're gone usually there's more, more strict airlines like Emirates or Etihad had they do not accept them um, you know those obvious visual obvious visible tattoos flesh colored or clear tights so i said black but no you have to have flesh colored or clear tights i wore flesh colored or as close as possible to flesh colored mocha i think i got them from primark i think it was like 15 denier it says here denim jeans or casual clothes are not acceptable they do make it clear that the jean, denim jeans and that are not acceptable but by the way i saw a lot of people dressing i could tell that actually they're definitely a bit more relaxed but i would say still try to stick to the rules try and dress as well as possible okay so that basically covers the assessment day after the assessment day we all chatted like we were all chatting throughout the day jumping on like whatsapp groups and talking about it talking about the process a lot of people ended up becoming friends some of the people in that particular initial whatsapp group i was with ended up living in the same accommodation I didn't because my passport was delayed and I wasn't sure if I was actually going to go for the job but the more and more I was like 
you were talking about it and that WhatsApp group was like, mm, actually, I really want to kind of go for this. When you go to the assessment day, you can meet people who you can share accommodation with. But I also had the opportunity to have the accommodation that they provided, which I will talk about. So have a successful day, number one, be fluent in English. Two, have all your paperwork in order, your passport, etc. Three, dress smartly and try to follow the grooming guidelines that they give you it'll give you more confidence if you can do those three things be fluent in english have your paperwork and dress smartly i really don't see any reason why they would reject you like i really don't see it and the english is the most important you must be able to speak english okay and obviously paper by paperwork you need to be an eu passport holder that's like non-negotiable as well yeah as long as you have those things then those are probably like the most important things the most important things after the assessment day they send you an email to tell you if you've been successful or not if you have been successful they immediately assign you to a base i was given a berlin airport to be based from there was a bit of confusion with my base they were confused actually they gave me the wrong base in berlin and then on the last day of the training course after like seven weeks i'm told i'm in a different airport and i'm like ah okay where i'm gonna be living is closer to the other airport so yeah it was a bit annoying for me they told me i'd be at one airport but then i ended up at another airport so that's another bit of a, a messy thing just know that your training course could be anywhere mine was in Hahn, germany if you are available for that training course you can accept it and go on it or you can tell them you prefer to come at a later training course date because maybe you need to finish up with your current job give notice etc or you can just reject it you know you have that option so yeah i hope that that has broken down the assessment day for you given you a few tips and let me know what you think have you been a ryanair flight attendant before do you want to be a ryanair flight attendant have you been a flight attendant before are you a flight attendant would you like to be a flight attendant but not for ryanair just let me know i'm curious and yeah keep a look out for the other videos that i'm going to be sharing in this series where i talk about the training course and then of course i talk about the job so make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed turn your notifications on so you know exactly when i've uploaded the video make sure you follow me on instagram and i will see you in my next video ciao